no gods, no life after death, no ultimate foundation for ethics, no ultimate meaning in life, and no human free will are all deeply connected to an, an evolutionary perspective. You're here today and you're gone tomorrow, and that's all there is to it. Dr. Will Provine, professor of the history of biology at Cornell University, gave us another disturbing glimpse into where Darwinism can lead. Oh, I was a Christian, but I never heard anything about evolution because it was illegal to teach it in Tennessee. Dr. Provine's first biology professor changed all that. He started talking about evolution as if it had no design in it whatsoever. And I came up to him and I said, you've left out the most important part. And he said, if you feel the same way at the end of one quarter, I want you to stand up in front of the students in this class and tell them this deep lack in evolution. And I read that book so carefully, I could find no sign of there being any design whatsoever in evolution. And I immediately began to doubt the existence of a deity. But it starts by giving up an active deity. Then it gives up the hope that there's any life after death. When you give those two up, the rest of it follows fairly easily. And you give up the hope that there's a, an imminent morality. And finally, there's no human free will. If you believe in evolution, you can't hope for there being any free will. There's no hope whatsoever of there being any deep meaning in human life. We live, we die, and we're gone. We're absolutely gone when we die. Dr. Provine is no stranger to the prospect of death. Nearly a decade ago, he was diagnosed with a large brain tumor. Let's suppose my tumor comes back, as it almost certainly will. Well, I'm not going to sit around like my older brother did last year, and he was dying of ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. He wanted desperately to die, but we couldn't help him die. I don't want to die like that. I'm going to shoot myself in the head long before then. I'm going to do something different. I hope these are empty words for my friend, Dr. Provine, because shortly after this interview was recorded, he learned his brain tumor had returned. I don't feel one bit bad about holding the views that I do. There's not anything in the views I hold that makes me, oh, I wish I had free will, or oh, I wish there were a God. I don't ever, ever wish that. Dr. Provine's deconversion story was typical amongst the Darwinists we interviewed. Biologist P.Z. Myers, who runs the pro-Darwin anti-religion blog Feringula, says science eroded his faith as well. I, I never hated religion. I found religion quite comfortable, and I liked the people in it. Uh, what led to the atheism was learning more about science, learning more about the natural world, and seeing these horrible conflicts with religion. And it was then when I discovered evolution, when I discovered Darwinism, but I realized there's this magnificently elegant, stunningly elegant explanation, um, which I didn't quite understand to begin with. When I did understand it, then that finally killed off my remaining religious faith. After hearing these stories, I was not surprised to discover that most evolutionary biologists share Professor Dawkins' views. It appears Darwinism does lead to atheism, despite what Eugenie Scott would have us believe. And if you separate out the ethical message from religion, what have you got left? You got, you got a bunch of fairy tales, right? I think that God is about as unlikely as fairies, angels, uh, hobgoblins, etc. Religion, I mean, it's just fantasy, basically. It's completely empty of any explanatory content. And it's evil as well. Half the people in this country think that drugs is what you have to regulate to make us safer, and half the people think guns. That's what you gotta regulate to make us safer. But I always think if you're gonna regulate one thing that has the most potential to cause death and destruction, religion. You gotta start with religion and... I'm not, I... Religion is an, is an idea that gives some people comfort, and we don't wanna take it away from them. It's like, it's like knitting. People like to knit. 
you know, we're not going to take their knitting needles away. We're not going to take away their churches. Uh, but what we have to do is get, get it to a place where religion is treated at the level it should be treated. That is something fun that people get together and do on the weekend and really doesn't affect their life as much as it has been so far. So what would the world look like if Dr. Myers got his wish? Greater science literacy, which is going to lead to the erosion of religion. And then we'll get this nice positive feedback mechanism going, where as religion slowly fades away, we get more and more science to replace it. And that will displace more and more religion, which will allow more and more science in. And we'll eventually get to that point where religion has taken that appropriate place as, as a side dish rather than the main course. But. Will eradicating religion really lead to a modern utopia? Hmm. Let me try to imagine that. And let's let history be our guide.